Thomas Homebrew coming at you with a homebrew review. That's right. I had a few beers sent to me by um, a local uh, brew tuber uh, by the name of Carl Oppenheimer. And uh, we've, we've had a few emails back and forth. He asked if uh, I would uh, try a few of his beers. Um, he didn't ask for me to put them on video per se, but uh, just to get some feedback. Cause you know, we all know it's hard to get some honest feedback on beers. And it's great for me to do that on video and then I can put it onto paper. So let's go ahead and get this one going. This is an IPA. It's made with Bravo, Citra, and Centennial, and Chinook. I'm guessing Chinook's probably for bittering, but uh, I think Bravo could do that too. And it's 7.5% ABV. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this cracked open. I have to say I'm excited. Carl went ahead and entered the SJ Pour Challenge this year, and he has moved on to round two. So it's kind of fun to have a, a fellow Portlander uh, moving on in the challenge. That's kind of fun. I'm not in the challenge this year because the grandkids, I just, I haven't been able to produce a good beer until after they left. Now, actually this last beer was pretty good. Okay, take a look. That's pretty. It's a bit hazy. I don't know if it's meant to be a hazy or not. The head's there. It's a bit thin though. Um, it is leaving a little bit of, of lacing though on the edges, at least uh, uh, at this port portion as we do this. And I am watching bubbles rising up on the side. So that's, that's appealing. We know that it's got some decent carbonation. I like the color on it too. That's a really good classic IPA color. Let's get the nose. Now I'm going to admit I'm a little bit stuffy here today. Huh. Okay. I, I don't know if that's what I think of from the hops. Let's look again. Not really. Citra. I get the Citra. Bravo. You know, I honestly, I'm not sure if I remember what comes off Bravo, but I know my Centennial pretty well and Chinook. And yet I'm getting some tropical notes off of it, surprisingly. Um, I'm, I'm not really getting that classic uh, uh, cattiness that you can get off of a citra, but I am getting some tropical type characteristics. I'm getting what it feels like a little bit of mango coming off of it. And a little bit of citrus on there as well, coming off of it. But again, my, my sniffer is not quite up to par. But it smells like it has a nice balance in terms of the malt bill and with a, like a, a light, light to moderate sweetness is what I would get um, character wise and definitely get some nice hop character. So I'm gonna go ahead and jump on in, cheers. I like to cover the mouthfeel and carbonation often first, cause that's some of the things that hit you right away. It's a nice medium uh, as far as carbonation goes. And it's a light to medium body on it as well. It's one of those beers that has a, I wanna say almost a thin taste to the malt bill. It just, uh, it comes on, you get the malt bill flavor kind of up front and then it kind of washes out a little bit uh, on the malt bill to almost like a water character. And that's not a, a criticism on the beer, it's just an observation. But it makes it a really easy drinking beer. And now I'm picking up a little bit more of the citra character, uh, just a hint more of that cattiness. And mind you, this was cold right out of the fridge. So this is gonna be changing as I go along. I would say it's definitely somewhat more on the crisp type of side. You're getting a really light, dank quality to it, which I, I dig on. Something else this reminds me of is what I call the Arizona beer. I've got a friend that's a brewer down in Arizona, owns a brew pub. It dries out on palate quite a bit, I would say, with still a, a light filling, and yet the hops can linger on. And that's exactly what this is doing. Uh, and that's a really fun style. Honestly, I don't find this is much in the Northwest, quite to this level. This really rings true to how they brew down there. And, and that's a really fun aspect. There's a lot of hop there, but it's not like it's bouncing out as one particular type flavor. So you're definitely getting a little bit of like a grapefruit kind of character and kind of a tangelo type quality. First thing I wanna say is there's no brewing flaws. You know, there's no oxidation, nothing like that you know I could go through a list it's not worth going through any of that no brewing flaws whatsoever the carbonation was well done as you can see and um, very well balanced and from that point it's just a matter of style 
of what you want to create. Um, I'm pretty broad in what I like. So uh, uh, in that sense, what you created here, Carl, was a really super drinkable beer. This is what I call a summer IPA, for sure. Um, the only problem I have, isn't really an issue, that it's 7.5%, okay? And it's not drinking like 7.5%, because with it drinking, where it dries out at the end, leaving you thirsty, I mean, literally, my palate is dry. Driving me to drink some more is, I could get trashed. Just, if this was on tap, I could get in real trouble. <laughs> but, um, it's delightful. I mean, I don't know what to tell you other than to get, like, ultra picky. Um, could you maybe add in, you know, something to build the head a little more? Yeah, that's a possibility, if that's your thing. If, if, if that's a determining factor that makes this a better beer, yeah. Add, add something in, a little more grains to, to, to build some more head on it uh, and, and lacing. Um, but outside of that, this is just a really nice drinking beer and it's all what you want to get out of it. Um, I think what I'm liking about this so much though, there's a lot of hops to this, but it balances out somewhat. I would like to get a little more uh, malt character, to be honest. Uh, I would like to be able to taste the malts just a bit more in this um, that I'm just not getting. So that body of the, the barley type character comes off very low in this. And this is being hypercritical uh, because you wanted to know. This leans more towards, like I said, the Arizona beers. Or uh, if you want to go down to Florida and you want to talk about Highlight, which is a fantastic IPA. So there's just nothing I can criticize here if that's what you're looking for, critique. Um, because when it comes to flavors and all those things and what you want out of a beer, that's a personal preference. And since I have a wide range, uh, I, don't, I don't criticize, but there's no brewing flaws whatsoever. You made a fantastic beer. I wanna know, I wanna see this recipe, and I would really love to see the yeast and the malt bill on this, because I'm very, very curious about those. Um, but Carl, I, there, you got nothing but praise from me. This is a great beer. I think Carl has had uh, a few people that have been helpful as I understand, I know some brewers he's talked to, and I, I believe that he's talked to some commercial brewers, and he's got some uh, advantages there on the east side. And I would say that uh, there's a very well-known uh, homebrew club, the oldest one in the United States, that's on your side. Uh, now with social distancing, I don't know what they're doing, but um, the Oregon Brew Crew, uh, I would say if you haven't gone to a meeting, I've been to a meeting with them, it's just... It's just too much to drive over there and be at a six o'clock meeting from as far west as I am in Hillsboro. Otherwise, I would have joined the club and been going for years. But I would say check out the Oregon Brew Crew because these guys are gonna be fantastic to work with. I'm gonna look forward to reviewing your other beers. Carl, thank you for this. I don't think that you can make comments to him, but I'm gonna put his link down to his channel. And if you're curious about his recipe, you can inquire with him. This is one hell of a good beer. This is Kevin Clements Homebrew saying, life's too short to drink cheap beer. And sometimes, you gotta drink someone else's homebrew. Oh yeah. See y'all later.